Hi, today we're gonna take a look at how to subtract mixed numbers and fractions. Let's start with a quick review. A mixed number, like this one, is the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. Also, a proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is less than the denominator, the bottom number. One half is a proper fraction, given that the numerator one is less than the denominator two. Nice. Are you ready for the first example? In this example, we need to subtract four and one half minus one third. We have a mixed number and a fraction. To find the difference, we we'll start by subtracting the whole numbers. In this example, the whole numbers are four, so we put four minus, and here, here we have no whole numbers, we only have the fraction one third. Given that we don't have whole numbers, we can put zero, zero, sure. And four minus zero give us four. Next, we can put four in the answer. Some students prefer to put four directly in the answer. Sure, that works too. And now we are going to subtract the fractions. The fractions are one half and one third. In the same order, we put one half minus one third. These two fractions have different denominators. To find the difference, we need the least common multiple of the denominators or the least common denominator. The denominators that we have are two and three. So we put two and three. The first multiples of two are two, then we have four, then we have six, eight, 10, and so on. The first multiples of three are three, then we have six, nine, 12, 15, and so on. The smallest number that we have on both lists is six. Then six is the least common denominator. Next, for each fraction, we need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of six. Let's start with one half. Pay attention. By what number should we multiply two to get six? By three, because two times three equals six. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And one times three give us three. Don't forget that one half and three sixths are equivalent fractions. They represent the same value. Then we have the minus sign. Let's continue with one third. By what number should we multiply three to get six? By two, because three times two give us six. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And one times two give us two. Now we need to subtract these two fractions with the same denominator. We have six on the left, six on the right. We can put six on this side and we continue by subtracting the numerators and three minus two give us one. The difference of the fractions is one sixth. Finally, we add the difference of the fractions to four. We put one sixth next to four. In that way, four and one half minus one third give us four and one sixth. Let's move on to another example. In the second example, we are going to subtract nine and seven eighths minus three fourths. Once again, we have a mixed number and a fraction. To find the difference, we start by subtracting the whole numbers. In this example, the whole numbers are nine, so we put nine minus, and here we have no whole numbers. We only have the fraction of three fourths. We can put zero, and nine minus zero give us nine. Let's put nine in the answer. And now we are going to subtract the fractions. The fractions are seven eighths and also three fourths. Here we put seven eighths minus three fourths. Since these two fractions have different denominators, we need the least common denominator. The denominators that we have are eight and four. We put eight and four. The first multiples of eight are eight, then comes 16, then we have 24, 32, then comes 40, and so on. The first multiples of four are four, then we have eight, then comes 12, then 16, 20, and so on. The smallest number that we can find on both lists is eight. Then eight is the least common denominator. In the following step, for each fraction, we need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of eight. Let's start with seven eighths. Hold on, this fraction already has a denominator of eight, so we don't need to make any changes. We can put the same fraction, seven eighths. Then we have the minus sign, Let's continue with three fourths. By what number should we multiply four to get eight? By two, that is correct. Four times two equals eight. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And three times two give us six. Next, we need to subtract these two fractions with the same denominator. We have eight on the left, eight on the right. We can put eight on this side. 
and we continue by subtracting the numerators. 7 minus 6 gives us 1. The difference of the fractions is 1 8. Finally, we add the difference of the fractions to 9, so we put 1 8 next to 9. Therefore, 9 and 7 8 minus 3 fourths give us 9 and 1 8. That's all for today. If you want to see more examples of this topic, check out this playlist. Have a good one and see you next lesson. Bye!